All right, welcome back to Fashion here. So next up, I'm gonna look at uh, each team uh, after the midway point of the 2023 Formula One season is of course Ferrari. So there are two drivers, uh, Charles Leclerc, Carlos Sainz, uh, in the points head to head, uh, 99 points for Leclerc, 92 points for Sainz. And ignoring uh, points from sprint races, it's 88 for Leclerc and 77 for Sainz. So Sainz has uh, quite a few more points in from the sprint races than Leclerc does. Uh, in the race head-to-head, -head, uh, it's the advantage for Leclerc. So it was six, uh, six to three in the race head-to-head. -head. But uh, when you look at average finishing position, very, very close. Uh, exactly six for Leclerc and 6.1 for Sainz. So Leclerc's had quite a few races where things have definitely not gone his way. Uh, I can remember Spain in particular, uh, where things were just absolutely awful. That definitely bring that number down. Uh, qualifying head-to-head -head, uh, in the head-to-head uh, -head battle, 8-4 to four in favor of Leclerc. So definitely more often than not, uh, Leclerc is the one who has the advantage in, on Saturday. But uh, when we look at the qualifying delta, it's extremely close. 0 0.003 uh, in favor of uh, Leclerc. Uh, so extremely close. Uh, for the most part, Leclerc has, Charles Leclerc has been ahead. Uh, but there have been a couple occasions where science has out-qualified him by a good margin. And while those races may be considered outliers, um, that being said, they're not massive outliers. So I did not remove them from the data set. Uh, looking at my average on the power rankings, uh, 6.1 for Leclerc and 12.0 for Sainz. So I do feel like uh, Leclerc's done pretty well uh, for himself this year. Uh, had a, had a quite a bit of bad luck, I felt, at the beginning of the year. Uh, that DNF from the opening race in Bahrain, uh, forcing him to take a grid penalty the second race of the season, uh, definitely did not help matters. Uh, but that being said, uh, I do feel like there has been a little bit room for, for improvement for Charles. Uh, looking at Carlos though, 12.0, uh, uh, I feel like he's been all right. Uh, I, I would say his start to the season is, has been better than his start to last season. But that being said, I think looking at all the drivers, I do feel like I, he's performing a little bit below average and that there is uh, a bit more uh, there for him. Looking at expected points, if you're a Ferrari fan, uh, it's probably best not to look at this, these numbers. 138.4 for Leclerc, 135.9 for signs and these are based on start position and this is for uh, basically my model that I made for the front running teams I actually considered using them all for the midfield teams instead uh, but basically based on the average amount of points that they get each race I figured no we'll put them in the front running team model and this is what came out obviously much much lower than their totals uh, their non sprint race totals and I think it can be chalked up to quite a few things you know driver error uh, mistakes on the team part, on the team's part, uh, for things like strategy, uh, mechanical issues, especially for Leclerc. But there have been some mistakes here and there. And I think as well, a couple races where uh, Leclerc, their Red Bulls, have uh, taken uh, grid penalties or they've had mechanical issues in qualifying, uh, particularly Perez uh, in the middle part of the season, as well as Verstappen. Uh, for example, Saudi Arabia starting 15th or from uh, the past race, that last race that we had in Belgium, uh, where he started from P6, obviously promoting Leclerc to pull. So that does inflate these numbers a little bit. Uh, we know that the Ferrari is definitely not as fast in the race as they are in qualifying. Uh, so that would be definitely something that would uh, uh, reflect those numbers. Uh, looking at Z score, 0 0.16, uh, ninth uh, biggest, so second smallest effectively. Uh, gap between teammates in the races uh, from my race model. So pretty close between Leclerc and Sainz. Um, I do think that uh, for Sainz, he is a little bit better. Uh, I would say a little bit better in uh, qualifying than the race the last couple of years. Uh, but that being said, the data does suggest that they are very, very close with the slight edge to Leclerc. Uh, looking at qualifying gap, uh, progression through the year, one point f uh, from races, uh, one to five. 0.229 uh, seconds, or about three tenths of a second, uh, which put them second, of course, behind Red Bull. Uh, races through six through 12, uh, still second, but uh, 0 0.25, uh, so a quarter of a tenth of a second, uh, yeah, a quarter of a second, basically, a uh, gap on average. So a little bit smaller of a gap, uh, but still uh, second by a good margin. Uh, now looking at their recent uh, history, uh, 2020, of course, the year that no, no Ferrari fan wants to talk about, 
131 points, which was sixth in the Constructors' Championship. Obviously, massive issues with uh, engine power uh, that year. Um, after their engine from 2019 was effectively nerfed and they had to basically almost rebuild an entire engine from scratch uh, during COVID. But uh, 2021, really, really nice recovery. Uh, 323, uh, 323 and a half points. Of course, that half point uh, from uh, Spa will not be forgotten. Uh, and third in the Constructors' Championship. So massive jump up in points, of course, aided by the longer calendar and a good jump up in the Constructors' Championship. 2022, uh, big expectations that year for Ferrari. Uh, they had basically given up uh, finished development on this year, on the 2021 car very early. Uh, the year long battle between uh, Mercedes and Red Bull basically went, of course, went down to the wire in Abu Dhabi. Uh, so there was an idea going into 2022 that they may have a slight advantage given that they had a lot more time to focus on the 2022 car. And you know, the start of the season was very, very good for Ferrari. Second half of the season, especially after Technical Directive 39, things didn't really go their way, but still they finished second in the Constructors, 554 points, uh, their best season points-wise since 2018, I believe. And then 2023, I think they were really expected to build on that as well uh, and really challenge uh, for the title. But things really didn't, haven't gone that way, 191 points through the halfway mark of the season, uh, which puts them fourth in the championship. I would say uh, with about half a season left to go, I don't think they're really going to uh, finish second. I think Mercedes uh, probably have second place in the constructors locked up. But, you know, that fight between third and to fifth, I would say Aston, Ferrari, and uh, McLaren is fairly fluid at this point. Uh, if they do, if they get things, uh, if they do really well after the summer break, I could see them finishing as high as third. If things really fall off and they have a lot of struggles, lots of uh, errors on the driver and, and on the team side, I could see them potentially falling behind McLaren if McLaren have an absolutely fantastic second half of the year. So that's definitely something to watch out for. Uh, for Ferrari, of course, uh, they'll be wanting to build on that. And I think really they're gonna be trying to understand the car as, as well as possible and try to make a championship challenge next year in 2024. So that's all for my look at Ferrari at the midway point of the 2023 F1 season. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.